Okay, it's the week ahead, brought to you by Financial Juice, great news, squawk service, and earn to trade the best funded trader platform out there. All right, let's do it. Okay, folks, welcome to uh, Tuesday, the 2nd of April. Before, hope everyone had a fantastic Easter. Uh, this is the week ahead. So we are going to go over a couple of stories here today, um, really just two, and then we're going to have a nice technical look at the market. So without further ado, um, what we have had already yesterday uh, coming out of the US was manufacturing PMIs, miss 51.9, ISM manufacturing PMIs, 50 spot three, you beat there. Nothing really doing out of those numbers, to be honest. Today, however, we got the Jolt's job openings. And as we talked about before from the FOMC, the kind of job situation really is where we need to kind of look to uh, when we want to think about what the Fed are thinking, right? And they've been taught, you know, Jerome was talking a lot about jobs and, you know, wanting that to stay uh, pretty buoyant where it is. And if he is to do a cut, well, really, if he's to do a cut, it, it's going to have to be precursored by a sort of a deteriorating job situation, right? So we'll get this now uh, at 3 o'clock today, set to come out 8.760 million, just below prior 8.63. Uh, going through the rest of the week, uh, we have CPIs out of Europe tomorrow, ADP, non-farm employment change um, at quarter past one. Services PMI, crude oil at half three, uh, but the ADP definitely going to be uh, sort of an inside look at what we might expect for uh, Friday, which will be the biggie NFP, expecting 205,000 there on Friday for the headline figure. Um, so really, and, and then Thursday initial jobless claims, so really the best days to trade this week are really going to be Thursday, Friday, to be honest. Obviously, Wednesday is a big one for the oil traders in this room. Um, so yeah, that's really all there is to look at on the calendar. It is a good and big week ahead, though. So what oil is on a rally today, and um pull back quite a bit at the moment, but um essentially, you know, a lot of there's a lot of all the talking heads are talking about well, war risk and this and that risk, but ultimately what has really kicked everything here into overdrive has been, you know, cousin Vlad entering into uh you know, the naval situation in the Red Sea. So Russia has sent in, as of last week, um, ships into the Red Sea. And what has happened here is they've essentially done a deal with the Houthis to say, hey, listen, you let us in there and we'll back you guys up, um, not only in the Red Sea, but we'll also uh, give you a little bit of representation and recognition at the UN and the UN Security Council meetings. And so um, where they've come in here is at the mouth of the Red Sea, the Bab El Mandeb um, El uh, point, port here. Um, so you can see the Gulf of Aden and all this, this is where the kind of US are sort of situated, sort of um, trying to protect their ships in and around this area and their interests as well. But, you know, this to me is, is a real proper saber rattling and potentially massive supply risk for oil in this whole region. And just around the corner, if we kind of zoom in, you see just around the corner, if I kind of in this little map here. So just around here, um, you have the Straits of Hormuz. So this whole area is a complete tinderbox when it comes to oil supply risk. All right, so that's ultimately, I think, why we're up here on oil. And we're going to have a look at that technically in a second on the charts. Another big one that came out, um, uh, well, actually, uh, not on April 1st, April Fool's joke, but yesterday was China's factory activity is expanding um, at quite a rate. So, you know, this is really flying in the face of what we all thought was a sort of a stagnant, um, oh yeah, sorry about that part, was um, sort of a stagnant um, situation for uh, the Chinese industrial activity, if you like. So um, what was going on there was really that, you know, China was coming out of COVID, well, is coming out of COVID. A lot of the property um, companies were going to the wall. And at the same time, any stimulus activity that China was attempting to do was just being met with, uh, well, just say. Hey. So now that we see China factory activity is expanding again, um, we can kind of start to see where maybe this is 
green shoots for China and the economy out there. So uh, have a read of this article. You know, uh, some small gains on the activity. Ultimately, any of these activity or any of these indices um, for the data, manufacturing PMI, anything above 50 is considered expansionary. Anything below 50 is contractionary. And so you see some of those U.S. Um, figures coming in contractionary territory at the moment. So um, that's all I want to cover for the um, news articles, really. And then we're just going to, you know, dedicate ourselves to looking at these charts and kind of having a better technical um, aspect on what's going on. So we're going to, we're going to, what am I going to cover today? I'm going to cover Euro and the dollar indices. Uh, we're going to cover Bitcoin. Uh, we're going to cover spoos, gold and oil. All right. So let's get into that. So here we are on the Euro. Ultimately, if we just hide all of that gump here, and we'll just show you here on the bigger aspect chart, this is sort of view up on the year here. And what we're looking for is a touchdown down ultimately to this uh, one spot double or one spot O oh, double six eighties. So that's quite a move down. You can see in the top left of the chart where we are in relation to that. So we're kind of, you know, if I zoom now into the 30 minute chart, you're still looking at now a weekly VWAP, right? And so we've had this nice pull back into weekly VWAP. And then we're seeing that rejection um, now follow through from that area. Will this hold throughout the rest of the week? I, I think so. And you're seeing the largest order on the book in the euro at the moment. It's currently down at one spot 07500. So that's just kind of right down here. Okay. So, you know, I think the market is likely to keep going on here. Now, we need to talk about the dollar because the dollar is going to have to remain bid. And why would the dollar remain bid for this then to happen? All right. So ultimately, before we finish talking about the euro, we'll just look at it outright on its own without talking about dollar first. And ultimately, a pullback onto here around one spot 088. Sorry, 08080. So one spot 08080 up here i think a pullback onto this should be sold to then get through to come down and um, if we do bid up over here i think there will be a real problem for the euro also oh, once for oh a 358 level just do keep an eye on that um out of the week all right then going off of that euro um into the dollar situation so the dollar is risk up at the moment so you know that that kind of isn't any surprise. However, we have hit this huge area on the top. This is the uh, value area for the prior year here. Um, and that seems to have been a nice little, okay, we're here and we're done for the market. So that's one, uh, 105 spot 082, something like that. And uh, you're seeing that resistance has come in this morning on the 30 minutes. So ultimately, where do we go from here? Well, I think a shallow pullback is definitely on the cards. And then with the risk of increased war um in the middle east i think we may remain uh, skewed to the upside if equities also start to to drop off to the downside it'll be a big question mark as to whether the dollar wants to then be bid on uh, on on equities dropping you know what is that risk event or or do you know dollar want to drop in sympathy with them but ultimately if we then just go in and look at the dollar on the um 30 minute chart looking at weekly view up yeah you're going to have a test here in the weekly 104 spot 80s um but ultimately if we kind of then look at something a little more granular here and look at the volume up in this area and see kind of where the market has been balancing you'll see as we start to pull back into these areas over here we're really starting to get it into a higher volume area so i think ultimately a pull back onto 104.63s uh, I don't really think that's going to be the best place for the dollar. I think a little touch back down towards something like 104, about 5188, somewhere around there for the longs. And then you get that sort of dollar and euro or just a simple euro dollar um, uh, selling down on the euro dollar. Um, so, all right, Bitcoin, it's taken a pullback and, you know, it's, it's pretty, you know, these, these new all-time highs really um, don't last too long and people just kind of book and profits, I suppose. In. But ultimately, you're seeing here on the yearly VWAP, we're just kind of caught now inside of that 1.5 and uh, just pulling back down here. So I think ultimately, I still hold uh, a candle fuck on a 49s. 
Um, but obviously that's you know a long way from where we are. Ultimately, this thing is, is going to sell down, I think, about 56s, 57s, this area here. And then buyers will probably try and come in and protect. Ultimately, I think they might get slammed back down. So I think down to here over the week uh, and then a bounce bounce. Um, ultimately, yeah, story to see. Are we holding at this area or not on Bitcoin? And if we zoom in to like the 30 minute, we can kind of see against the weekly view up here how that's well, ultimately it's looking really um, selling overnight there. Just um, yeah, updated. So there you go. I mean, looking at this situation here, we have, let me just see Monday being here. So our weekly view up is just setting right back up at 68.5. And I think, yeah, I don't. I don't think a pullback even onto ETH would be uh, too wise today. But ultimately, I like selling around that sixty-seven, forty-seven, eight area just there. And let me just show you that there. So, yeah, I like shorts in that area. And but ultimately, if the market was to make a rally right now, I, I'd be seller on that weekly view. I'm currently at forty sixes. Um, VIX is rallying big time at the moment. Um, equities, as you'll notice, are getting sold down. So let's let's look at what's going on here. Well, ultimately, this is the start of a new quarter as of yesterday, and so you know, with that, you know, it's probably a little bit of profit taking um, to be done, a little bit of repositioning going on as well across lots and lots of portfolios. So do be aware of that, right? And so, but ultimately, I think we're going to be trading back down to in around fifty one nineties here. All right, I just I don't know what the catalyst is for um, us to sustain the upside but then again you know <laughs> i've have haven't been entirely clear on what the overall catalyst is has been for the last um months really to get on up here well obviously you know fed pivot and all that stuff and uh, but look looking at the darva steps if you are short this mark and i don't think many are you're you're not going to be able to ignore this um, little high that we put in here which then when tested again causes pullback of three days essentially so you know we're going to be testing that pretty soon here now on uh on spoos i would imagine so if i just hide like my b period and we kind of look do a little bit of uh, volume analysis in this whole area here um you'll see that there's a nice little ledge just below this level of 50 ultimately i think the market will trade back down careful about how we pivot around that because it seems like and uh, the sort of level to look at in this whole area is it right about there 5241s sort of a high volume node and um, this locality come uh, under here have a little breach and then you just want to check if that 30 minute candle closes below this level or even that day closes below this level. And if it doesn't, then I think we're in for one of these and another bounce. If we get the closing below this uh, 5241s, that to me says we're coming back down and, and best in around this 5183s over the course of, well, not only this week, we're probably early into next week, uh, but NFP to come, uh, calls on the market. Looking here on the 30 minute for the spoos as well. Uh, you can see that we're just dropping imbalance now on the week. So this might have some buyers try and catch it here. Rally is kind of back up. I think if we do make it back up, say 5300s in this area here, I think we should be short that area and get back down and pick up where the real buyers are in this market. Um, but ultimately, uh, here is our one that we were looking at just on this daily chart that we just saw. So uh, I, I like what might happen in here. I'm going to neutralize that, all right, for now, uh, either being a green or a red, but I'm just going to neutralize that. And then ultimately, the biggest buyers are in this mark is down here, 51.70 even, all right? On that, all right, cool. Let's move on to gold, which is having an absolute blinder of a day. Up, up and away here on gold into new all-time highs this morning. And putting in 27.5 as that new all-time high. Um, look, this is this is so balanced to the upside. It's on a it's on a vertical tear. Essentially, you know, there's not much trading you can do just off of this chart here. To be honest, there really isn't. Um, so ultimately, I think you know, obviously this pullback here that we saw in around uh, the uh, yearly PVAH here, a phenomenal run for this market. You know, we're putting in what, about 200. 200 
200 and I would say, yeah, it's 270 odd dollars on the price that involves there on that PPB long, lovely trade for the swingies. Um, but if we want to get something a bit more tradable on the day to day, you know, the, sorry, the day trade, we got to zoom in on the 30 minute and see how we're rotating. And ultimately, we're just rotating around this weekly view up. Ultimately, it's gone imbalance, new high on the week there this morning. And so I think any sort of a pullback um, in the, into below VWAP here is probably going to be supported. All right. So just kind of uh, a bit of the volume in this area as well. We can kind of see here um, that what a high volume now put in there this morning. And I think ultimately uh, there could be a little catch um, here at 22.68. could be kind of interesting for a long, just below that weekly VWAP. Up. But at the moment, because it's closing or about to close here at the, uh, um, I wouldn't really be risking along here. I'd let this shake out. We're going to open in, uh, well, we've actually just opened 10. Buying not really coming in here on the open. So let's see what we get. Ultimately, if equities continue with the downside, I think uh, gold may release itself from the shackles of being tied to equities. And we're certainly seeing that today with gold new all-time highs and equities just can't lift their head out of the water. Um, so what is the trade? Well, I don't know. I can't, I can't justify buying something up here. I can't do it. So ultimately, I'll be looking at probably down around 22.29s, half down around here, right? That's WPV. Okay. And then finally, on to WTI crude oil. Well, this is the big art. And so this is ultimately like what we like to look at here and um, we have had this whole yearly auction pleat one side to the other i mean this fantastic rally for oil from the yearly pval yearly pvah which all occurred in um 43 days that's uh 1244 and 17.4 percent of a of a rally there on oil and there is no sign no sign at all of this stopping so currently on the high of day you know, we just hit up 0.68 for the year, essentially, there. Um, ultimately, look, what's the trade? Well, we'll back here. I was trying to marry up on my charts the 2021 high. It's going to seem a little bit of Monday morning refereeing here, but on my own system, the 2021 high is coming in at that high of day here on this chart. And so this imbalance pullback onto VWAP. Well, before I go off the daily, I think if we hit this 85.61, we're really getting into some very beefy and very historical um, resistance levels up here. So this 85.61s is actually that low from, well, yeah, like mid-2013 low there. Um, and then it's been you know tested again here in 2021 as a really nice high for 2021. Then we rallied over that coming in 2022 and the Russian invasion of Ukraine. It's, but you can see it's a really nice little bifurcation area um, for 561s to the upside. I think if we hit there, the market might have blown a bit too high too fast. And we're, we're going to need to pull back a little bit. Right? Yeah, that's going to be uh probably the 8357s to try and let's go and look at here so yeah uh yeah i think a pullback easily into the uh 8357s is on the cards here and that is currently confident with the 100 ema on the 30 minute chart a bit of a favorite of mine that'll be coming below weekly view up when it does that but it may it may just want to only spend a little bit of time there and bring those buyers in and we rally higher um, I would like to see the pullback to here to be buyer before I see a bid up to the 8561s. Um, you know, I think if we get up here and we can't hold and close the day over there, I think it's going to be short down um, for sure and then and pick up. I don't know what will happen here. We'll probably get, still get buyers at 57s on oil. All right. That has been a pretty comprehensive run through the markets there, boys and girls. Listen, um, I hope no one uh, ate more chocolate than they were able to handle, apart from my uh, two-and-a-half-year-old son, who uh, was absolutely high like a crack cocaine addict all the but sure, um, it goes. All right, listen, thanks for tuning in. Please do like and subscribe to you all soon. Have a great week.